because scripture tells us that your word um, is able to give us an inheritance among those who are being saved. So we want to commit ourselves to you and pray that as we speak, Lord, you will take this word and minister uh, into our hearts, into the hearts of brothers and sisters who will hear us speak uh, this, uh, uh, this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, good afternoon. Um, you know, our names are Mr. and Mrs. Guatizzo, Mary and Fibion. Uh, we are talking about the subject of uh, knowing Jesus, uh, a quest to learn. And uh, we will be sharing together. Um, I'm not quite sure how this will, uh, uh, will work. Uh, we normally don't preach together. We lead uh, uh, Bible study and counseling together. But preaching together, this is kind of like a first. Uh, but we'll see how it uh, it goes. Um, I think Mary will will get us uh, started, uh, and then we'll be crisscrossing. Hopefully, uh, you will stay with us. Thank you. I think um, a point of correction for starters. I am not going to be preaching, but this is going to be more of teaching than preaching. So our first reading is from 2 Peter 3, verse 18, which reads, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both honor, now and forevermore. Amen. So from this scripture, we learn that the Lord wants us to grow in our personal knowledge of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. How does that happen? Or how do we do that? That growth comes as we pursue the knowledge of the Holy One. To grow in our personal conviction, not borrowed conviction, as the word begins to bear forth fruit in our lives and, and nourishes our souls. It is food for the soul. Such knowledge also equips you and I and speak to my conscience when I'm confronted with challenging situations or temptation. Yeah, and then uh, we go on to... Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Paul writes to Timothy and he says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. We attain such knowledge by hearing the word of God from the pulpit or in any forum where the word of God is taught. By reading the word during my personal devotion or quiet time. By diligently studying the word, memorizing the word, and subsequently the meditation of the word. I like or I prefer the NIV version, which actually talks of us as expected to do our best. I think that is the simplest version that I find as it talks of us as uh, desiring to present, uh, to do our best, to present ourselves to God as one approved. Our best is the standard or the yardstick of God. This implies to me that I need to acquire this knowledge wholeheartedly and giving it my best shot is I would apply myself when preparing for a, major exam, for a major exam or a crucial exam in my life with the aim, of course, of passing or better still, excelling in the examination. Give it the seriousness it deserves and not slacken 
this knowledge transforms and is to my own benefit if I commit to it seriously. And Colossians 2, uh, verses 6 to 7. Uh, tells us, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Now, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving, rooted kudzikamidzichaiko. The NIV talks of rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Here, the Apostle Paul was urging the Colossian believers to continue in their walk in their walk of faith, fervently, not in their own strength. As Paul uses four words to describe the Colossians' walk in Christ, not the tense of the word rooted. It denotes a complete action. Could Zikami Zichaiko and not to relax, to know that you are now in the Lord. The believer has been rooted in Christ. No more swaying back and forth. The next three words, built up, established, and abounding, are in the present tense. In this context, this shows a pattern of continual growth that should characterize any Christian's walk of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, when we slacken to pursue the earlier traits, it means that our knowledge of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, is compromised. And we could easily stagnate or we still begin to gradually backslide. So, so how do we become rooted uh, in Christ, because, um, you know, Paul is urging the Colossians here that it's okay you have received Christ, but you need to be rooted in him. Um, you need to be, uh, to be built up in him. You need to be established in your faith. And I just thought I'll, I'll share, um, you know, how we do this. Um, you know, they, they are basically... Um, you know, four things that we do, uh, the handles that I, I can give. Uh, the first one is, um, you know, to focus on the word of God. Uh, I'll give the sign of the hand illustration. Uh, the hand illustration gives us, uh, you know, five methods by which we can, um, you know, absorb the word of God or we can focus on the word of God. The first one is that we, we read the word. We read the word of God, um, and then we, we hear it. Uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads this prophecy. So we need to read the word of God for yourself. Uh, I read a lot of the word of God a lot, uh, sometimes an, an hour a day, just reading the word of God, wanting to hear what God is saying to me. And then there's need to hear the word of God. Uh, Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then we need to study uh, the word. Uh, now, reading and studying are different. So studying uh, is where you are examining scripture, where you are comparing scripture, where you are interpreting scripture. Acts 17, 11 uh, tells us that the uh, the Bereans were, uh, were of more noble character. Uh, why? Because they examined scripture every day. So we need to, to study uh, scripture. In other words, I think um, what this word of God is telling us here, that uh, whenever we have an opportunity to listen to the word of God, 
we should not be just passive listeners, but instead, after hearing the word of God, we need to take the effort, to make the effort to actually go back into our own closets and examine the truths for our own selves and thereby building conviction. And then, um, so that's, that's you, uh, you, you hear the word, you read it, and you study it. And then thirdly, we need to memorize scripture. You need to memorize scripture. Uh, we, here in BCC, um, we, we watch kids uh, from children's church come to memorize. But memorizing scripture is for all of us. Psalm 119. Uh, verse 9, 11, how can a young man keep his way pure? I'm no longer young, uh, but I, I live by this word. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sit against you. So we need to memorize scripture. And then finally, we need to meditate on scripture. So you find out that if you are, if you are only listening, you can hardly have a grasp of of scripture. You can't even hold. And if you are listening and hearing, which I think most of us do, uh, we hear the word on Sunday uh, and perhaps we read a little bit, still you don't have a grasp. Uh, if you put the third finger, maybe you are improving a little bit. Now you are, you are hearing, you are reading, and you are studying. And then you meditate. Uh, it's a little bit stronger. But when you uh, you now memorize and meditate, you have got a firm grip of scripture. So that's what we need to do in order to know, to know Jesus. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to pray without ceasing. Uh, Psalm 114 verses 1 to 6. So I can also give you a handy illustration for prayer. Um, you know, the, 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 the little finger here will represent praise. Psalm 146 verse 1 and 2. Praise the Lord, all my soul. So in our prayer, we need to praise. And then thanksgiving, Ephesians 5, 20, give thanks for everything. Uh, even in the midst of difficulties like this, uh, where perhaps we, uh, we have got a lot of fear, there is uh, uh, COVID-19, and we have shut down our businesses. Uh, scripture says, give thanks for everything. Uh, you know, so as we pray, we need to give thanks to God uh, you know, for everything. And then intercession is the third one. Uh, and intercession has got to do with, uh, you know, praying for others. Ephesians 6, 18 to 19, um, you know, Paul says, pray in the spirit always. But he then also say, pray for me as well. So we need to pray for one another. And then uh, uh, the fourth one is petition. 1 Samuel 1, 27, Hannah brings Samuel uh, to the temple and she said, I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted me what I asked for. So in petition, we are asking God for things that pertain to us. And finally, we need to confess our sins. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. So we read scripture. We spend a lot of time in scripture reading and praying during our quiet time. Um, and then we... We serve others as well. Um, just as the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to save. Uh, so we need, we need to save others. Now, I like uh, Philippians 3, uh, verses 3 to, to 11. And I, and I would like to read it. Um, it says, Paul there says, For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Uh, and he goes on to say, I, I circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. That's, that's his confidence in the flesh, yeah? And he says, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But listen to what he says in verse 7. He says, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, 
For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which, is, which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. In verse 10 he says, Oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I might attain the resurrection from the dead. Now, here is a man who had everything. And I know that there are many of us uh, in faith ministries, men and women who have got every reason to boast. Uh, perhaps you, you could boast because you have got money. Perhaps you boast because you have got power or access to power. Uh, you know, perhaps you boast because you are educated. Uh, we have got professors in this church and we have got lots of doctors in this church. And that is sometimes reason to boast. But Paul says, you know, whatever gain I had, whatever was to my profit. Uh, now, I'm a chartered accountant by, prof by profession. I run my own business. Um, I think by the standards of this world, we are successful. I am a successful businessman. Um, but I, I, I consider that nothing worthless compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, uh, whom I serve with, uh, you know, with a passion. I worship with a passion. Um, you know, in, in, I'm, I'm old now, uh, but when I was a little bit younger, I mean, I, I had a lot of zeal and passion, and uh, even as a chartered accountant, I'll be found among university students sharing the word of God. Um, and, and people say, what are you doing? What are you doing with, with students? Uh, oh, that I may know him and, and the power you know, of his resurrection. So knowing Jesus must cost us something. Okay? It either is costing you your time, uh, it's costing you your resources, uh, it's, it's costing you your ego, um, and, and you, are, you are found, you know, serving the Lord. You are found in a place where you, uh, you are ministering, where others, perhaps of your class in the world, will say, how could you be doing this? But that's what it means to know Christ. It means you have got to be prepared uh, to count your gain as loss for the sake of knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord. And on that point, too, I think um, a scripture that comes to mind um, in Luke 9, 23, our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, I think he actually says that if any man should come after me, he should first deny himself and then take up his cross and follow me. This cross we are talking about, it talks of being carried daily. So it doesn't look like... Um, there are um, other days where we are supposed to be, uh, take time off, but our Lord Jesus Christ makes a clear point that we should take up that cross on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, knowing Jesus also means that we have got to keep his commands. And, and scripture tells us is in 1 John chapter 2, uh, verses 2 to 6, uh, and verse 3 specifically says, and by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So, keeping his commandments. Um, you know, what does that mean? Um, keeping his commandments means that um, we apply scripture to our lives. Um, it means that uh, we read the word of God and the word of God, you know, tells us specific things and we apply scripture. So that is the sign that we, we know Jesus. 
the more progressively we know him, uh, the more our conscience uh, speaks to us. You know, Paul says in Acts 24, 16, so I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man. Now, there are, there are people who, don't, who no longer listen to their conscience. Um, but if we know Jesus and we claim to know Jesus, um, we should be believers who are uh, listening to our conscience. And our conscience speaks, and that's, for me, I take it as the Spirit speaking to me. So when my conscience uh, speaks to me, I listen. And I, um, you know, I obey. And I, um, I do what scripture requires, you know, of me to do. So keeping his commandments uh, means continuously we are in tune with God. We are in tune with uh, his word. We are in tune with his spirit. And we are listening to the spirit. And we are putting into practice uh, what the word of God is saying to us. Loving other fellow believers is a fundamental requirement of the Christian life. This shows that uh, we have come to the knowledge, the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are able to love our fellow believers, genuine love always results in action. Not mere sentimental, not mere sentimental words, but in real action. I'm forever um, uh, amazed every other time I look into the first church in the book of Acts. Scripture tells us that they shared everything they had in common, and none had need amongst them. It is my prayer today that may the Lord help us, that especially in our hour of need, in the environment that we find ourselves in, that we are able, that our conscience is able to prick us when we hear that a fellow believer is actually going without, perhaps when we have got an overspill or an overflow in our own resources. I urge ourselves, dear brethren, that may we, may we have the Lord take us back to the first where we believed, where we would respond to the needs of fellow brethren just as the example that we find in the book of Acts, in the first church. Now, in, in 2 Timothy 1, verses 11 to 12, uh, Paul says, I know whom I have believed, uh, but I, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Now, knowing whom you have believed, uh, you know, gives you the, the confidence uh, to pursue your walk with God uh, without shame. I'm not ashamed, you know, of the gospel. I mean, Romans 1, uh, 16, I think, says I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. So, you know, for, for me, what, what that means is that because I know whom I have believed, I can spend time, uh, you know, with, with God. I can, I can invest in him. I am not ashamed to tell, uh, you know, my business associates uh, that I am a believer because I know Jesus. Uh, I'm not ashamed to uh, not participate in, in what, uh, you know, other businessmen do, uh, do participate in shameful deeds. Uh, scripture calls them shameful deeds because, because I know whom I have believed. Now, how do, how do I actually, just to share a practical you know, example here in closing of how practically we, uh, we pursue uh, you know, knowing Jesus ourselves in our, uh, in our closets. Uh, my wife did mention about closet. Now, in our closets, what we also do is um, almost every morning, each one of us, uh, you know, has got a time alone with God. Um, and during that time alone with God, we want to do two things. The first thing we want to do is to read scripture 
until God speaks. Um, so, so we read scripture until each one of us hears something from God. Um, and by the way, it's, you know, it could be different hearing, but when I talk about hearing from God for me, it's when scripture literally jumps out of the Bible at me and, uh, and thoughts start flowing. And then what we then do is we journal, we write it down. So every morning I am writing what I hear God saying to me. And, and, and I think for me, you know, as, as, of, this, as of this morning, um, you know, uh, beginning of this year, just starting from January uh, up to this morning, I, I had heard, I have heard from God, you know, almost 380 times uh, during my time in the Word. Uh, where I'm hearing what God is saying to me, and God is specifically saying, Phibion, this is what you need to do. And, 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 and I try and meditate on that and get clarity in terms of what God is saying. So that's what we do every morning. We read scripture with the intention of hearing what is Jesus saying to us today. And then the second thing that, that we do during that time of uh, alone with God, we call it quiet time. Uh, during that quiet time, time alone with God, the second thing we do is to pray back to God. So, so God has said something to me, and then I, I say something back to God. So I will then also right now, what is it that I said to God this morning? Uh, and thereafter, we come together to share and to pray together. And uh, one other thing that we do as well, after sharing the word together, or what would have possibly heard the Lord uh, speak to us, we also look at uh, we also look at points of up, points of application, because we say whenever the Lord speaks or whenever the Lord has instructed, we need to look at a point of action or a point of application, because we cannot say we have heard from the Lord and then do nothing. So as a means and as a way of just keeping track of um, our work with the Lord or what the Lord would be saying to us. We look for points of application and thereby when we look at points of application and we follow through those points of application, we then begin to see our lives getting transformed because there is no way that the Lord can speak and one remains stagnant or at the same, at the same level. Thank you. Now, in closing, I, we have said a lot of things and we said them um, rushing. So in closing, let me say to us, if you want to know Jesus, if you have got a quest to learn, uh, you need to take God seriously. Um, scripture tells us that um, Abraham believed God. I mean, God takes Abraham outside and he asked him to look at the, the stars. And, and he says, you know, count these stars if you can. Uh, so shall your descendants be. And scripture tells us that, you know, Abraham believed God. And, and what does that mean? Uh, what does believing God mean? I think it means that we need to take God seriously. And if we are going to take God seriously, then we need to spend time with him. We need to spend time in his word. And when you are spending time in his word, I can't meet you after you have spent time in his word and I ask you, what did God say? And you have got no answer. So as we take God seriously and spend time in his word, let's listen to what he is saying to us because he speaks to us. And then if we are taking him seriously as well, we need to speak to him. We, he, he needs to have a relationship with us. So let's take time to pray. We see Jesus praying. We see him spending a whole night in prayer. We see Jesus waking up early in the morning to go and pray. So we should also pray. And if we believe Jesus, we take him seriously. Uh, we read his word and listen to what he's saying. And we pray back his word to him. Uh, you know, our relationship with him will grow. And may God bless you as you implement this. If there's one thing you can learn from us, it takes time every morning to spend in the word of God, hear him and speak to him. And may you grow as you do that. And may he bless you as you do that. Um, we can pray. Father, I just want to thank you for allowing us this opportunity to 
examine your word. Thank you, Father, for that which we have learned. And I am praying, my God and my Father, that even as we digest this word, Father, may you speak to us, speak to our hearts. Father, that we'll be able to, to come out, of oh God, transformed, or at least have mastered one thing that will bring about, Father, a change in our lives. Father, for the greater glory of your name. Thank you that when you ask of you, Lord, you grant us. Thank you that we know that you are asking from a, from a Father who hears from on high. We are grateful, Lord, for the way that you continue to answer our prayers on a daily basis. May your name, Father, be honored. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen.